I've filmed many stories over the years. You're a wise man. But no story has had more impact or lasting memories than the story of Quentin. I've had a very rich and full life. I've gone through things that no one would ever want to go through and I've experienced things that most people will never do. Okay, here we go. Now what's going to happen? What? You're going to watch this film when it's made and you're going to say, he didn't know very much. And you know why? Why? Because you don't tell me. Come on, ask me a few more questions. Quentin, I've interviewed about eight prime ministers and you're harder than all of them put together. What? You're very hard to interview. Doesn't this bring back some memories? It reminds me of the first time I got bribed. Yeah, you were seven years of age. Yeah. You understand what a bribe is? No. We'll play a game. Okay. Every time you do a proper answer, you get a point. Okay. Every time you give a dumb answer, I get a point. First one up to five. If you win, we go to the supermarket. Okay. Okay. If you win? No supermarket. Okay. Let's go. You ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. How important is it for Quentin to walk? Very. Please help me walk. Come on, Quentin, try. Kick. 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 He was born with broken bones, and they haven't stopped breaking. Well, it feels like you feel nothing when the cracks when the cracks start, and then you and then you start feeling a lot of pain. Quentin, good to see you. Mate, how are you? Really good. How are you? Bloody excellent. Broken any bones lately? Broke a rib yesterday. I heard it crack. I felt it crack. And now I'm in immense pain. Don't worry, I'm not dying on you. No, not just yet. No, not yet. We haven't had lunch yet. No, exactly. <laughs> hey, guys. Hello, Quentin. How are you? Excellent. <laughs> when people ask me about you, which is constantly, uh, I have three questions. Hi guys, how are we going? Uh, what do you want? First one is your health. <laughs> yeah, me too. Fluctuates. From what to what? Okay, to complete crap. No double vodka on rocks today. <laughs> You're getting soft in your old age. I know. The other question they ask is your age. 37. They remember the documentary and you are a boy. For the second time in your whole life. Are you ready? Yeah. I'm going to let go. Whee! In those early couple of years, what were your expectations for Quentin? Very low. We had been told that if Quentin survived the first year, he would spend the rest of his life flat on his back. Hmm. Bob, mm -hmm. I'm turning. Which way? That way. Quentin has defied everything physically that we ever expected or anybody could have expected of him physically. Um, I would like to see my son go as far as he wants to go. So what do you think about walking? I don't know. Don't tell me I don't know again or I'll bop you on the head. <laughs> Going back 30 years to our documentary, Yeah. how much did that change your life? It changed my life completely. From I was just a regular disabled kid. And then I suddenly became Australia's little Aussie battler. Rods of steel. What are they going to do for you, Make boy? Me walk. Make me walk. How strong are you, Quentin? Strong as a lion. 
strong as a lion. What are we doing? Crossing the road. What do you think people want to see us together? Like, what do you think the draw card is after all this time? Uh, that's a great question. Part of it, well, the biggest part of it, obviously, is you. The story was you. But I think people saw something in our relationship. Yep. That's the best answer I can think of. Fair enough. You've had a few friends here who've died, haven't you? Yeah. When your friends die, where do they go? Heaven. Where else? What's heaven like? I know I've never been there. What do you think it's like? I don't know. You'll be there before I am. <laughs> Not when or if, but how. How I'm going to die bothers me. One of the one of the most funny things I had recently was I had pneumonia, and the doctor came in all 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 upset. You know his hands were shaking, and and he said, "Oh, Mr. Kennehan, I I I I don't know how to tell you this, but you may not live the next twenty four hours." And and I smiled at him and and just joked. And he says, no, I'm serious. And I looked at him and I said, oh, I'm sorry. You're thinking you're the first person that said this to me before. That's okay. Have your moment. Get it out there. And then go out there and work out how you're going to keep me going for the next 24 hours and the 24 hours after that. Because if you don't have confidence in in doing what you're doing, you can piss off and get another doctor. Because I don't want to die. No one wants to die. I just care about how I'm going to die. I don't want to die languishing in a hospital bed. Like I said, if that's the case, give me the gun and give me the bullet and I'll pull the trigger. Would you really? Yeah, sure. You wouldn't really use a gun, though. Yeah, why not? Have you got one? No. Well, there's your first problem. Well, yes, there's always problems. <laughs> Quentin, how are you, buddy? Hey, Pete. Yasser Quentin. Yasser, Dick Hello, man, how are you? Yasser Quentin. Yeah, Russ. Throughout my life, I've, I've had to fight for everything, as you know. And I guess fighting for stuff means that I've had to become very confident, very direct, and very persistent. All of a sudden, everyone looks at me. Don't you hate that? Yep. It's the way it is, isn't it? Yeah. So I don't suffer fools. And I guess that comes to not knowing how much time I've got on this earth and knowing that if I have to do something, I have to do it now. I have no time to wait till later. How much time do you think you've got? I don't know. I don't know anymore. I, everyone said it was to the age of... 30, so I only built myself to that. And like I said, it's got, I've been kind of on a mystery tour since then. This is the hardest one I can think of. My last chance to get a point. I'm not. My question is, can you ask me a hard question? Me ask you a hard question? Yeah. Okay. Why haven't I heard from you for 10 years? Well, I apologise for that. Where's the love? Where's the love, buddy? Where's the love? Where's the flowers? All I can ask... It's like I got money on the dresser drawer and no phone call at the end of it. All I can ask is forgiveness. Fair enough. Well, that's fair. I'm a forgiving man. Fair enough. My turn? Go again. How's the family? They're all right. My dad passed away about seven years ago um, due to emphysema. 
you know, the rest of the family's good. They lead normal lives, not bothered by my craziness. Yeah. They might even enjoy it. No, they didn't enjoy any of this public life. They didn't like it at all. I remember you famously said to me once in your office, you said, Quentin, you better learn a second job because you're not going to stay cute forever. Just one more of those smiles, hey. Quentin. Oh, what a smile. It almost cracked the camera. That's another question I get about you. Girlfriends. What do you want to know? Like, well, be more specific. Well, I don't want to be specific because that could be intrusive. I just want well, to see what I, you'd like to say. You, you don't want to be intrusive. After 30 years, finally, Mike Willis, he doesn't want to be intrusive. That's a joke. OK, have you got a girlfriend? No. How long since you've had a girlfriend? Five years. I am an Iraq computer. I am an Iraq computer. I might have to turn you off, Quinn. I am computer. an Iraq computer. Yeah, will turn you off. I am an... I am an Iraq... computer. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Quentin, you're funny. I'll put you back on. Now, you told our producer, Alex, that you didn't want to be asked about God, but you said to me, ask me anything you want. So my question is, why don't you want to talk about God? Alex? Quentin, what did you say to me? Why do I not want to talk about God? Because I spent 10 years watching you run around the world gabbing about God. No, you haven't. Yes, I have. I've seen your documentaries. Every time I've seen you and interviewed, you've interviewed me, you've asked me about God. All right, that's about me. Yeah, that's about, about you. And I didn't want to sit here and answer a question about my personal beliefs about God. Because, I, because... No, my question was, why don't you want to talk about God? I don't want to talk about God with you. Oh, great. Ah, ah, oh, shit. Oh, shit. No, back. Go back, go back, go back. Ah! No, ah! Shit. Apart from the obvious, if there was one thing you could change in your life, what would it be? Not that I'd change, and this is no offence to you, but I'd be interested to see how my life turned out if that doco had never been made. <laughs> I'd be interested to see who I am as just being a regular, everyday Joe Schmo. But you're still you. Well, yes, and you're still you. What have I failed to ask you? Are you happy? And the answer? I'll get there.